rapper number 12, Irish Whiskey. The undefeated Sean O'Malley. Um, I, I gotta ask, the, the unranked gear, uh, I think is genius. What was the uh, inspiration there? Was it just kind of a, an F you to people or a troll or uh, what, what made you want to launch that? Well, I'm unranked, so it kind of made sense. Uh, and the champ, I feel like, you know, if, if you could only pick one bantamweight fight to watch and we all fought at the same time, I believe most people would choose me. So unranked champ kind of kind of fit the fit the whole the whole merch drop. Nice. You know, your statement about not fighting the the, the higher ranked people until you're paid more. It's honestly very logical. It makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious, like, what's the biggest reaction that you've gotten to that? Is it people that say, hey, that's actually pretty smart, or, or people say, hey, we hate you. You're supposed to fight the toughest dudes out there. Yeah, I, I do remember saying that. I feel like that was quite a bit of fights ago that I, I wanted to make more when I fought. But I've also called out Cody Garbrandt, Pedro Munoz, Dominic Cruz. I've called out the ranked guys. So it's not necessarily I want to be paid more to fight the ranked guys. At this point, it's just like, you know, I've called them out. I haven't got those fights. I don't. I don't pick my fights. Clearly, I would. If I was, if I picked my fights, I would be fighting one of those guys. They offered me Paiva, who was ranked 15. You know, I didn't know that at the time until after I accepted it, and they said, "Oh, he's ranked." And then a couple of days later, he wasn't. So, um, I think the idea that I just pick my fights is is a little bit. It, it's not exactly true. Um, they offered me Paiva. I said yes. It's like, does that mean I pick my fights? I don't know. I didn't. Oh, I didn't say, hey, I want to fight Paiva. So it, it, the whole I pick my fights and I'm not going to fight someone tough until I get paid is, it is not necessarily true. What do you think about Paiva as a fighter? Obviously, he's not one of the most known guys in the division, but he's certainly proven dangerous. What do, what do you think about him as an opponent? Yeah, he, he's dangerous. You know, anybody in the UFC is going to be a dangerous opponent. I think Paiva's dangerous. He's very tough. We saw it in the last fight. Um, my buddy Kyler, you know, really, if you, he beat him up. And, and Paiva somehow won that fight. So in, in my eyes, he's coming off a loss, really. Like, I, th I thought my buddy beat him. Um, he, he's a dangerous opponent to show that much heart. You know, Kyler was hitting with some hard shots, and, and, he, and he stayed up. You know, I, I, I just went through a fight like that with, with uh, Chris. So I think, you know, going through that last fight shows that I can, you know, I'm not going to get tired beating someone up. So if he wants to get beat up for 15 minutes, I'm down. You win this fight probably are ranked at that point. Does that matter to you at all? Do you care? Because maybe it does give you access to those bigger names, or do you care? You know, if I get ranked 15, 14, whatever, after this fight, you know, I already called out Adrian Yanez, and he's not ranked, and I have no issue fighting an unranked guy if I'm ranked. It's not, it's just, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I think, you know, a good win over Paiva. I also don't want, I'm not overlooking Paiva. I have to go out there Saturday night and perform the way I'd perform, and I have to put his lights out. It can't, it can't be a boring fight. If it's a boring fight, you know, I don't really have any say in what's next. I go out there and put Paiva's lights out. I, I can call out, you know, Giannis or, or whoever I want. But, um, I'm yeah, Paiva's a tough opponent. Last thing for me, I know you said, hey, win or lose, I know you're going to want to, you know, love me, hate me. You're going to want to tune in and watch me fight, you know. Does it bother you that you have haters? I mean, you've, you've come in and entertained from the start, you know. Do you wish you were universally loved or do you kind of enjoy having some haters? I don't necessarily enjoy having haters, but I don't I get sad that I have haters. It really means it doesn't – they're going to watch the fight 100%. Someone's not going to be watching the fights. Then I come on the TV. They're like, nope, I'm not going to watch. Like, that's not going to happen. They're going to watch. They're going to make – Sure, they watch. They're gonna call off work so they can watch. So I'm not really worried about about the haters. Sean, I saw earlier this year you met Conor McGregor. I know that was a meeting you'd long been looking forward to. I was curious, what did you guys talk about, and did he give you any advice? It, it was a it was a very short conversation. It was a very loud stadium. Um, I think he had a couple of shots of proper twelve, so his accent was extra thick. Um, it was really cool meeting him. Um, you know what was said was. He said, you know, he, he thought it was a cool performance, my last fight. Um, but, but the conversation it wasn't much. It was, it was pretty, it was loud. It was hard. You couldn't even, even if I posted that video with sound, you wouldn't have been able to hear what we were talking about. Um, but, but it was a cool experience. Sean, right here. Uh, speaking of Paiva, of his 21 wins, 14 have gone to a decision. So outside of his toughness, what exactly stands out of him on, in terms of his skill set? I didn't even know he had that many fights or that many. I, I've, I've literally never watched him fight until last fight. Kyler fought him. I, 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 I didn't even rewatch that. 
I just go in there and, and I know what I'm capable of and I believe in my skills and you know I know he's an orthodox fighter um, he's a, I think he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu um, he's been in the UFC he's got a couple fights in the UFC uh, I, I really don't know much else about him other than I'm way faster than him and, I'll, and I think that's just that's what's going to play out in this fight and that's what you're going to see and you've obviously called out Dominic Cruz and Cody Garbrandt. They're both on this card. Have you run into them at all this fight week? I haven't. I, I think, um, yeah, I, I haven't. I think they're both smart. They're both, you know, it's not like I, we don't like each other. We're not going to fight each other at the hotel. And it's not like that. It's, it's you know, if, I think we'll fight someday. Both of them, maybe. We'll see. Um, but it, it, it'll, be, it'll make for an interesting fight week if we do run into each other. I don't know. You know, it's not like I have ill will against them. Um, they might. I've talked a lot of shit. Um, but Cody, Cody went down to 25. It's like at this point, I'm, you know, you can't talk shit to someone that goes down a weight because they don't want to fight me. So we, were, we spoke to Dominic Cruz earlier today, and he said he truly does not care that you are above him on the card. In fact, he gets paid the same, and he gets an earlier night. And if he did care, that would be just ego. So in your mind, does it matter where you fight on this card? Does it matter that you're above Dominic Cruz on this card? For my ego, it's fun. It's funny. It's hilarious. He's a former world champion. He's, you know, he's not even on the main card. So, of course, he's going to say it doesn't bother him. What, is he going to come up here and cry about it? And then he looks like a, looks like a baby. But to be honest, I wouldn't really care if I was on the prelims either. Fighting earlier sounds good to me. I don't get paid anymore. I'm not trying to sell this fight. I don't get pay-per-view points. Um, you know, it is cool opening up such a massive card. You know, opening up a card at 7 p.m. Like, I know what time I'm fighting. That is nice. And I think that's, uh, if anything, that's probably the, the biggest thing is knowing what time I'm going to fight. So, you know, I, I do believe him a little bit when he says it doesn't bother him. But come on. It's got to bother him a little bit. He, him and Pedro are both ranked in top 10. They're, on the pre, they're not even the main event of the prelims. Like, that's, you know, it's got to sting a little bit. Sean, in the middle right here. In the middle, Whoa. Sean. Unranked champ, but also the sleep champ, right? So what mattress, what mattress are you rocking with, man? You got one of those memory foams, or what are we no, doing? I just got a little – I don't even know if I should say it. They don't, no one's paying me to, to – I got a good little mattress. I've uh, talked to some mattress people, and they're like, eh, I don't know. So we'll, we'll skip out on what mattress, but I'm sleeping good. Fair enough, man. Uh, just as for the Bantamweight division, obviously phenomenal right now, arguably the best in the world. Uh, do you feel like the depth of the division maybe will make it harder for you to climb up the ladder, or do you think personality and performance will kind of triumph just how many bodies are in the division right now? Yeah, I think I also agree the Bantamweight division is probably the number one in the UFC right now, which is really cool to say and really cool to be a part of. Um, yeah, the top 15 is pretty crazy, the top 10. Uh, I think, you know, just go out there and keep doing what I do and putting up performances, and, and uh, I'll get to that belt. And we mentioned Cody earlier. Uh, just curious, you know, what your thoughts are on his fight, how he'll do dropping down, you know, since you guys have gone back and forth a little bit. Yeah, I still think that's a possibility to fight at, at 35. He's obviously capable of performing at 35. He, he beat, you know, dominant. He's beat a lot of guys. Um, We'll see. If he goes out there and performs really well at 125, I don't really see that fight happening. Maybe maybe it does. Maybe it's a mega fight and it happens. But uh, he goes out there and loses. It's like, who knows? I don't know. where That fight might happen someday. Might not. We'll see. Um, I think him moving down to 25 could be good for him. I think he's, he's not a big 35-er. I think he's probably walking around at 135 right like today. He's probably on weight for bantamweight right now. Um, so I think 25 might be a good home for him, and I honestly wish him, you know, I, th I think he's going to do good. Yeah. Best of luck, Sean. Thank you. John, I believe it's been nearly four years since you made the UFC debut on the, the tough finale. Would you, would you say the career has gone to plan for you, how you map things out, or would, well, or if you wanted things to be different, would you? I haven't lost yet. I think things are going good, man. I can't complain. I'm, I'm excited where I'm at in the UFC right now. I'm 27 years old. I got, you know, got a lot more fights. Um, and I'm in a good position. I, I mean, name another millionaire that's outside the top 15. I don't think you can. And it's not necessarily just from fighting. Just, you know, the UFC has given me a huge platform to be able to get big sponsors and stuff like that. So I, if, if you would have told me four years ago you're going to be a millionaire and not fight, not even be top 15, I'd be like, all right. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. And in your last few fights, you've 
you've stolen the show, stolen a lot of headlines from the from the main eventers. How do you plan on doing it this time around? Yeah, I mean, Connor versus Dustin was the main event last time, and then I do feel like, you know, Chris and I stole the show. You, you, I mean, it's a shitty way to become popular, getting beat up that bad and being like, yeah, but I didn't get knocked out. It's like, yeah, but you got beat up for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I did steal the show. I plan on stealing the show again. Um, Charles versus Dustin is an insane fight, insane matchup, and uh, very worthy of the main event. But I always feel like when I'm on the card, there's two main events, whoever's at the top and then wherever I'm at on the card. Excuse me. Hey, Sean, here in the back. As you mentioned, the bantamweight division is on fire, but there's a little bit of controversy at the top regarding Sterling, and then a lot of people see Jan as sort of a real champ. What's your opinion on sort of the title picture, the official title picture, to say, in uh, the, the bantamweight division? I think Peter Champ, Aljo's number one right now. I think a lot of people are writing Aljo off because of that last performance, and, and Peter did you know, beat him, I thought, besides the knee, obviously. Um, I, th I think we'll we'll see. It's hard to say. I mean, we'll we'll see it play out again. Is that fight booked already, or no? No. So yeah, I, I don't know. That's probably the fight we'll see next. Um, I think Aljo's still definitely, you know, ch champ worthy uh, uh, in the bantamweight division. But I, I don't see him beating Peter again. He's gonna have to change his game plan. He can't come out there like a spaz and you know gas out as fast as he did. And it's, so far, nobody has really been able to conventionally beat Peter. He kind of beat himself in his, uh, against Aldo, Aljo. What would you say is the key to defeating him then that nobody has managed to so far? I mean, it's just fighting is all about styles. Stylistically, I think I, I, um, I give him a big problem. You know, he's a really good boxer, really good wrestler. He, he's, you know, I, I think he's up there with, with Kamara with pound for pound. Um, when I watch him fight, so I think just the styles. I think I give him give him trouble. I think that's a massive fight, a main event pay per view someday. Um, yeah. And the final one for me. We saw Jose Aldo come back with a big win. Uh, some people, a lot of, or a lot of MMA fans, just love seeing a veteran like him be able to get back in the win column and really get close to the title picture again. What's your opinion on uh, Jose Aldo? Do you think he will challenge for the bantamweight title again, or is this kind of his last hurrah? It's, it's hard to say. I mean, the dude's, the, he's a living legend, and any time just watching him walk out is, is really cool to see. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's one of the best in the world, for sure. Definitely up there in the bantamweights. Um, you know, that's a fight that I think would be, a, would be a massive fight. The Sugar Show versus Jose Aldo, I think that would be a crazy fight. And that would be probably the one fight that I would be standing across the cage like, what the, f like what? That's crazy. Um, so we'll see how, see how his fights plays out. He probably will get the next title shot, Peter uh, against whoever wins that. Um, yeah, I, w I, w I would love to see him you know, be get, the, get the bantamweight strap. Maybe has a better shot beating Aljo than he did, does against Peter. We've seen that fight play out, um, but I would love to see him, you know, be champ. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> when you're this gifted, you can always give a proper gift. Rich and smooth, proper number twelve, Irish whiskey. <laughs>